Hogwarts well, House Week. Can't believe this is finally happening. This subject has been on our list of things we want to do since probably the second week of Wittios, and it's finally happening. I am a Slytherin, and I am proud to be a Slytherin. I guess, like Hannah, I went through a, a crisis when uh, Pottermore first came out because although I adore Harry Potter and I adore them, I never thought thoroughly about what house I'd been in. I just, I was kind of told I'd be in Ravenclaw because I'm relatively intelligent and I was just like, yeah, sure, Ravenclaw, it ain't that bad. And then when I got on Pottermore, I got Slytherin and I was like, hmm, and I thought about it. And it was probably the first time I generally had like a sit down and think about hmm, which house would I actually be in? And I wouldn't be a Ravenclaw, although I like to think of myself as clever, sometimes. I don't pride intelligence as the most important like aspect of a person and I don't have that whimsical nature that Ravenclaws have. And then I thought about Slytherin, well, and the general qualities of a Slytherin is ambition, cunning, thinking before action, again intelligence is something that the Slytherin house has to a certain extent and yeah these are all qualities that I guess I possess and just to get out of the way, Slytherin is a great house to be part of, not like oh it's the evil house because that comes from Ron Weasley in the very first book being like there's not a bad witch or wizard who hasn't come from Slytherin, no. There's been plenty of good people to come from Slytherin, Horace Slughorn, Severus Snape, Draco Malfoy eventually. And there's also been plenty of bad people from other houses. I mean, Peter Pettigrew, the guy that was the reason behind James and Lily's death was from Gryffindor. So you can't live in this two-dimensional world where all Gryffindors are good and all Slytherins are bad. And Slytherin and Gryffindor House are really, really similar. They both are very confident characters, maybe, and they're both very self-assured. But I guess the biggest difference is Gryffindors rush into action without thinking, and Slytherins think. And Slytherins have a certain self-preservation. I mean, if you think about it, Harry was very, very nearly in Slytherin. And thinking before you do things is sometimes the best answer. Every one of the houses, like, traits can go badly and I think maybe the reason Slytherins in the series tend to have more villains is because they are told they are the bad guys. I mean you've been told from year 11 by all the other houses you're evil and they don't really like you. I mean it's very rare for Slytherins to have friends outside of their house in the series and I think that's just because everyone else believes they're evil and if suddenly you've got one guy saying no you aren't bad here, you are better than all these people who don't want to be your friends. Come join us, you're more likely to join him. And also, the end of the seventh, one of my biggest issues with the movie, is the end of the frickin' seventh movie, when the Slytherins don't want to die to save Harry. That's not a bad thing, they don't want to die to save Harry, and McGonagall sends them to the dungeon. Never mind that they would be fighting their mums, their dads, their cousins, their brothers, their sisters, their uncles, their aunts, their entire family, all these people they've grown up with, they would expected to fight them. That's just insane. <laughs> I think the personalities that Southern has are most effective in the world we live in today. And that we should just all embrace the colour green and silver. Bye witty people. Knox.